In the previous tutorial, we had taken a look at this cube in the scene and had added some procedural textures to it and some different shaders. And then we went through the process of animating between the two. And so this is a really nice effect. Like for me, I don't just see this as a glass cube. I might see this as, you know, uh, a glass eyeball and some evil material behind the eye at some point in time that you can switch between when somebody sees it, right? So there's the possibilities are pretty endless on Blender these days because of Cycles rendering. It gives us a lot of power. And in this lesson though, however, what we'll do is instead of just using this cube with procedural textures, we'll add another cube and we'll use uh, image textures. So we'll have to get a UV image map for that case. So let's just switch this over. We'll move this. I'll just move this one out of the way a little bit. Like here. And we'll add a new cube to the scene. And we'll keep this simple for starters. All right. We'll add this one up here. Like this. Just about like that. Yeah, that'll do for starters. And we'll scrunch it down. It doesn't have to be so big in the scene. OK, so then let's go look at our UV window. I mean, our noted editor. Add a simple texture to it just to give it something to start with. Yeah, OK, that'll be better than nothing. Move this window up here. And let's see. So we know that in order to do textures, we need to add a texture node. So we're going to add a texture, image texture, to this. Like here. Now watch what I, let's go look at the object data pa panel in here, right? Where we were working with vertex groups, the shape keys, and the UV maps recently. Okay, so when I take this texture in here, like this, I'm going to add maybe, uh, let me see, where is it? We'll add one image in here. Of course, we don't see anything yet going on because we haven't done anything to this as far as unwrapping it. So let's go into edit mode. In this case, let's just use this unwrap in here. Let's project. Well, I'm not even going to try and unwrap it. I'm just going to project from the view down here like this. All right. So based on the view that I'm looking at, it's actually wrapping the texture right onto the scene from that view. I mean, is that convenient or what? Okay, so that's a, and if you have your view fixed like that, that's a very powerful little technique to be able to use. And at the same time, it's added a UV map here to the scene for us, like this. But and if we go up here to the texture button, you can see that it's set vector. Well, it's using it says default, but default is the UV map, I believe, in the system. But now let's go back into the object data and we're going to add our own second UV map, UV map.001 to the scene. So we're going to need uh, another texture input associated with that. And then we know we have a problem here because we can't just connect both those up. So we're going to have to move this out of the way and we're going to get our color mixer in there into the scene like this so it can mix between textures like that whoops nice going huh <laughs> that oh my goodness okay so now we have those set up like that All right, let's go into here there's still that texture there but um, we d will open this one what, what was this this was eight let's go get number eleven Okay, there's number 11. Well, already you see what's happening. Suddenly we have both textures right there in the scene. You can see one's overlapped in the other. Let's just go with all the ones. There's all there. One. This doesn't look like it's all showing up. This obviously needs to be scaled up so you can see the entire number. Because when I zoom the thing back, you can't see the precision in the numbers. So let's go all the way to the other side. So now I have two textures mapped onto the surface like this. Let's see what it looks like in regular mode. Very nice, right? How convenient is that? And then of course we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come down here to frame zero like this. I'm going to press I and I'll give it a keyframe and then I'm going to come up here to 120. And I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to give it a keyframe like that. Alright? And then suddenly 
I should be able to just step through. Let's see. Where is my... Oops, hang on. Oh no. It's not doing it. Well, of course, we know why it's not doing it. Okay, so let's move this here. So, obviously, it acts like it wants to do it. See, because when we're in here, we can actually change it like this. So, you would think that the animation would work, but like you saw in that little previous setup I had done before when we were working with vertex groups before, it, when you want to make it work with texture maps, you have to have that attribute node set in there. So, you have to go to Add Input and then get an attribute. I'm going to put that up there. I'm going to do Shift D and get a copy of it and move that down here. I'll zoom in on those. All right, so I have two attribute nodes that I need to connect the vector input onto here for these. And then I need to specify the maps. So this one is UV map. That's UV map. You just have to type it in. And this is going to be UV map.001.001. Okay, now with those in there, it should be smart enough to know. Let's see here now. Okay, now what am I doing wrong? Here's my animation going. Why is my texture not flipping between the two? What have I done wrong? I know I'm not doing something. Let me go into edit mode. Maybe I'll see it real time updated like that. No, I don't see it. You know, but I'm not buying it. I don't buy it. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to go over here and do a quick animation test between 20 and 120 or somewhere like that. 20, 120, like this. I'll do AVI JPEG. Let's just see what happens when, when I run through the animation. Let, I'll tell you how we'll do it too. We'll just, here we have the render set at 10, so it'll be relatively fast. We should be able to see it change in real time. So let's run it here. Uh oh not looking at the scene. Hang on, I'm going to have to change that camera view real quick. Like that. Alright, now let's run the animation again and see if we actually see it change. Let's see, that is frame... Oh no, this might take longer than I thought. Frame 21, frame 22. No. Alright, let's just do it this way. So that's frame 21. Let's just come up here and press F12. Let's see if it's changing. Let's press let's escape that. Press F12 here. And yes, we can see it's it's changing. There's that. And then let's see F12 there. And there it's all that texture there. And then if we go back to 20, we can see that it's the other texture on there. All right. So it's really an issue of, uh, I guess, I can't see it in real time. I should be able to see that in real time, just moving it on the timeline like that, you would think. But maybe that's not implemented, or maybe I'm doing something wrong. But at least if I run the animation, it'll do it correctly. In fact, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll move the camera and do the animation, and I'll run that as, at the beginning of the next tutorial. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.